welcome to our special show English for Development where we talk about how the English language can play a key role in developing a nation. Now with a population of nearly 1.2 billion, there are no exact figures to determine how many people speak English fluently in India. The National Knowledge Commission projects that only 1% of the total population has the skills required to compete successfully in the global workplace. With the growing economy and the rise of the private sector, English language skills are essential to grasp global opportunities. Now there is a huge demand for English in India, from students to housewives and young professionals. And the British Council has been working closely in this field for several years, partnering with state governments, private firms, schools and media houses to help India realize this dream. The first time Ranjit was brought to the Karmak Charitable Society in Khedi Kala village near Delhi, he was just nine. Today, as he walks in, nine-year-olds look up to him as their hero. Ranjit grew up playing on the lawns of this NGO, which is home to children who used to live on railway platforms. He is now a successful coordinator at another NGO nearby. Among many things he learnt here, English, he says, is what shaped his career. जहाँ पे मैं भी काम कर रहा हूँ तो बहुत सारे मतलब वहाँ से volunteer आते हैं और वो English में पूछते हैं कि क्या होता है यहाँ पे कैसे होता है तो मैं English में उनसे बात करता हूँ. In addition to providing vocational training, this NGO realizes the crucial role English can play in empowering people at the grassroots level. It occasionally invites guests to teach the language to the children here. Didi आती थी तो वो लाइक हमको एक लेटर लिखने के कहती थी कि इंग्लिश में तो उससे में हमको इंग्लिश इतना आता नहीं था सही से तो वो लिखवाती थी हमको कि लाइक बाहर कंट्री से आप कैसे आप फ्रेंड बना सकते हैं और उनसे बातचीत कर सकते हैं। Away from the railway platform, Ranjit has put his life on track, inspiring others to follow in his footsteps. To enable easier access to the English language, the British Council conducts high-level discussions and policy dialogues with not just academics but also practitioners and decision makers. Subversive space of multilinguality, where it is eminently possible to create activities in which all the languages of children are privileged, rather than being constantly silenced and humiliated, provides a site to begin our journey towards a more social, more just social order. In this space, English itself can survive and play a more meaningful and constructive role. Children can begin to realize that their languages are as systematically organized as English or any other language. This is a space where we can not only examine dangerous sociolinguistic stereotypes, but also promote divergent thinking, higher levels of linguistic and scholastic achievement, metalinguistic awareness, cognitive flexibility, and most of all, social tolerance, all of which correlate with multilingualism. We know that now. Secondly, I think there is no reason to believe that what could happen to Greek, Sanskrit, Latin, or Persian will not happen to English. So I think there is a ringing bell there which people should listen to. And finally, and I think that's a good sign, that technology which was hitherto almost exclusively exploited by English is now increasingly accessible to all languages. Alison, why uh, do you think um, English is important for mm. development? I think Professor Agniotri raises some important points, and I think um, as, as the British Council, we're fully aware of the potential risks associated with focusing only on one language. Um, uh, certainly our focus on English is not meant to be a subtractive focus. We're looking at, at empowering people to speak English as well as other languages. And, and I can give more examples of how we do that. Um, we, we mapped research from across India, um, findings from the research that we did, onto the Maslow hierarchy of needs. And what we found was that um, learners that we consulted across the country were learning English because they felt they had 
basic needs that could be satisfied through English. Uh, Rukmini, um, uh, the question I'd like to put to you is that you teach in um, you teach at IIT Delhi, which is um, perhaps one of India's most sought-after uh, institutions of higher education, and you have yourself studied at Cambridge, of course. Um, the language of classroom transaction in higher education in India is, um, whether by accident or by design, um, almost entirely English. What is your um, take on that? I'm with my students a lot of the time, and I think a lot of the time we have a paradox. The paradox is this, that these students are very, very technologically skilled. They have technological skills. What they do not have and what they often complain about is what they call communication skills. For myself, I think that the most interesting debates will come because India is still uh, one-third illiterate. What we share is illiteracy, not just English literacy, but illiteracy because we do not know. We cannot read other people's languages. So we need to think of this in a much broader multimodal, multilingual fashion, multiscriptal. Uh, I will. Um, you have worked on uh, English language projects across the world um, in very recent times in Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Thailand, to name only a few. Uh, do you think uh, Policymakers and development uh, planners sometimes make too easy a link uh, between the provision of good quality English language education and development. Um, there's a very well known Swiss economist called Francois Grin, um, who has done a lot of work on this, and his conclusion is if you specify very, very, very precisely exactly what you mean by economic benefit, so who is going to benefit and exactly in what ways, then sometimes you can find a link between competence in English uh, and uh, individual income, for example. But what he stresses is that does not allow us to make generalizations about English and development. It's, it's much more complicated than that. We need much greater precision. Another study of... Uh, the economic impact of English is a study which was carried out in India um, which shows that there is um, some benefit for younger people who are well educated if they have high competence, high competence in English. There are clearly some benefits in English um, but we, we, must, we must be very careful um, in identifying them. We need, <clears throat> we need to be very, very precise. As governments and policymakers discuss change, it's also important to understand how really one can achieve language proficiency. I have with me Howell Coleman, a researcher at the University of Leeds. Howell, thank you so much for joining us. Let My me start pleasure. by asking you, how much really does English help in the development of a nation such as India? Uh, it's very difficult to generalize because the situation from one country to another um, varies tremendously. English clearly has a role to play in some aspects of economic development, some fields of employment. For example, you can't become an airline pilot un unless you have enough English to, to manage your job. Um, but sometimes I think the, the role of English is exaggerated um, and we need to look at other issues in, in development. Um, talking about local languages, what really uh, are the challenges posed while trying to teach English in a multilingual setup such as India? I think I would turn the question around the other way and say what are the benefits of having a multilingual situation? I think uh, India um, is very fortunate to have such a, a wide range of languages um, and I think the, the, the challenge is to make use of those languages, not to ignore them, not to minimise them, not to see them as a problem, but to make sure that children's primary education um, takes place through the language that they are familiar with at home. On that solid basis, then you can start to introduce a national language or an international language such as, such as English at a later stage. And what really is the role of governments as well as the private sector in promoting English as well as um, lang other languages? Right. I think um, government has a, an important role to play in, in balancing the pressures on different languages. Sometimes there's a, a lot of demand for English which actually can't be um, there's no rationale for it. Um, so governments can educate people um, about the importance of certain languages, 
how certain languages um, may play a role in early education, other languages may play a role in uh, higher education. Government can also try to ensure a good supply of well-qualified teachers who can teach through local languages, through a national language, through an international language. So government has an important role to play in quality uh, control, quality assurance, um, and in educating people about the role of language. All right, Howell, thank you so much for speaking with us. We'll take a quick break now, but don't go away. On the other side, we'll bring you an insight into how English can really help in developing a nation like India. Welcome back. You're watching English for Development, where we explore how the English language has impacted lives. Now, before we bring about any kind of change, it's important to understand what the audience really needs. Alison Barrett gives us an insight into the Indian market where we explore how the English language has impacted lives. The research that's been done by the British Council shows that the, the need for English is actually quite fundamental in India. Um, the research demonstrates that young people think that they need English in order to access employment. That could be vocational employment or it could be more um, uh, workplace office type employment. They need English to be able to fulfill their social basic needs, for example, filling in forms at hospitals or admission forms for their children for schools. And they also need English in order to further their opportunities, either through higher education or um, universities. The British Council conducts several activities to enable dialogue and ensure development. And I have with me the Director of the British Council, Mr. Rob Lyons. Thank you so much for joining us today. Take us through what have been some of the significant achievements of the British Council over the last couple of years. Okay, well I think the most significant achievement is around Project English, um, which is reaching out to train half a million teachers across India. And we've done that through training 4,000 master trainers, and it reaches 25 million learners across India. We've also uh, established four teaching centres uh, in India, uh, here in Delhi, in Calcutta, in Chennai and in Hyderabad. And we're also developing uh, new online products and mobile products. And what really are going to be your plans for the future over the next couple of years? Well, our key plans are, one is engaging with the million teachers across India and making sure that they have access to uh, English language resources and materials from the UK and also reaching out to 100 million learners across India, particularly through uh, digital products. Right. Thank you, Rob, so much for speaking with us. The British Council trains people to not just speak, but also teach English. Let's take a look at how language skills have helped empower people. The burqa-clad women of Nizamuddin Basti in Delhi may appear chained to old traditions and orthodoxy. But it's only when you interact with them that you know that things have changed. Young girls here are learning English in the hope of getting ahead in life. Now I can speak in English and very correctly and fluently. And now I, can, uh, I teach English to the students and it is very helpful to me. It improves my uh, teaching skills as well as it also improves my personality. Many young boys and girls from the Basti have benefited from the recently conducted course in English by the British Council. Age? Dick Mohsin, for example. He has done masters Job. in public administration, and? but English was one subject he lacked confidence in. With British Council's six months course in English, today Mohsin has become a teacher, helping many others in the Basti learn the language. And the families here have welcomed this change with open arms. मैं तो खुद चाहती हूँ कि लड़कियों को अच्छी एजुकेशन दी जाए और जैसे ही मुझे इस कोर्स का पता चला तभी मैंने बेटी को परमिशन दे दी कि आप इस कोर्स को करो और इस कोर्स को करने के बाद आप इंग्लिश अच्छे से सीखो ताकि आपकी इंग्लिश इम्प्रूव हो। For the people here, English may be a new word, but it has opened a new world for them. In a multilingual country like ours, learning new words and new phrases has always been our strength. And even as a large number of Indians set out to embrace English as a new mode of communication, 
it's time for me to brush up on my skills as well. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching. British Council has really helped me. The faculty here has been so good towards me. They've uh, you know showed me my weaknesses as well as my strengths, and I've worked on my weaknesses. And today I am uh, a good speaker for sure. The fact that English has become such a global language today, and um, knowing it is very essential in today's times. So um, just for the main reason of improving my English skills and the basic self-confidence that you need when conversing with someone was a major reason why I chose um, to join British Council and uh, work on my skills. I started learning English because I felt it would help me discover new avenues, new challenges and most of all unlock opportunities in India and abroad. I came to the British Council, God knows when, many many years ago to first of all level check myself and be inspired. Um, and in the process I think I've gained tremendous confidence.